William Henry Gates III is an American business magnate, software developer, investor, author, and philanthropist. He is the co-founder of Microsoft Corporation. During his career at Microsoft, Gates held the positions of chairman, chief executive officer, president and chief software architect, while also being the largest individual shareholder until May 2014. He is considered one of the best-known entrepreneurs of the microcomputer revolution of the 1970s and 1980s. Gates was born and raised in Seattle, Washington. In 1975, he co-founded Microsoft with childhood friend Paul Allen in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It became the world's largest personal computer software company. Gates led the company as chairman and CEO until stepping down as CEO in January 2000, succeeded by Steve Ballmer, but he remained chairman of the board of directors and became chief software architect. During the late 1990s, he was criticized for his business tactics, which have been considered anti-competitive. This opinion has been upheld by numerous court rulings. In June 2008, Gates transitioned to a part-time role at Microsoft and full-time work at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the private charitable foundation he and his wife, Melinda Gates, established in 2000. He stepped down as chairman of the board of Microsoft in February 2014 and assumed a new post as technology advisor to support the newly appointed CEO Satya Nadella. In March 2020, Gates left his board positions at Microsoft and Berkshire Hathaway to focus on his philanthropic efforts including climate change, global health and development, and education. Since 1987, Bill Gates has been included in the Forbes list of the world's wealthiest people. From 1995 to 2017, he held the Forbes title of the richest person in the world every year except from 2010 to 2013. In October 2017, he was surpassed by Amazon founder and CEO Jeff Bezos, who had an estimated net worth of 90.6 billion US dollars compared to Gates's net worth of 89.9 billion US dollars at the time. As of May 2021, Gates had an estimated net worth of 144 billion US dollars, making him the fourth richest person in the world. Later in his career and since leaving day to day operations at Microsoft in 2008, Gates has pursued many business and philanthropic endeavors. He is the founder and chairman of several companies, including Ben, Cascade Investment, BGC3, and TerraPower. He has given sizable amounts of money to various charitable organizations and scientific research programs through the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, reported to be the world's largest private charity. Through the foundation, he led an early 21st century vaccination campaign which significantly contributed to the eradication of the wild polio virus in Africa. In 2010, Gates and Warren Buffett founded the Giving Pledge, whereby they and other billionaires pledge to give at least half of their wealth to philanthropy. Chapter 1 – Early Life Bill Gates was born in Seattle, Washington, on October 28, 1955. He is the son of William H. Gates, Sr. and Mary Maxwell Gates. His ancestry includes English, German, and Irish-Scots-Irish. His father was a prominent lawyer, and his mother served on the board of directors for First Interstate Bank System, and the United Way of America. Gates's maternal grandfather was J. W. Maxwell, a National Bank president. Gates has an older sister Christy, and a younger sister Libby. He is the fourth of his name in his family but is known as William Gates III or Thray because his father had the two suffix. The family lived in the Sand Point area of Seattle in a home that was damaged by a rare tornado when Gates was seven years old. Early in his life, Gates observed that his parents wanted him to pursue a law career. When he was young, his family regularly attended a church of the Congregational Christian Churches, a Protestant Reformed denomination. Gates was small for his age and was bullied as a child. The family encouraged competition, one visitor reported that it didn't matter whether it was hearts or pickleball or swimming to the dock, there was always a reward for winning and there was always a penalty for losing. At 13, he enrolled in the private Lakeside Prep School, where he wrote his first software program. 
When he was in the eighth grade, the mother's club at the school used proceeds from Lakeside School's rummage sale to buy a teletype model 33 ASR terminal, and a block of computer time on a general electric computer for the students. Gates took an interest in programming the G system in BASIC, and he was excused from math classes to pursue his interest. He wrote his first computer program on this machine, an implementation of tic-tac-toe that allowed users to play games against the computer. Gates was fascinated by the machine and how it would always execute software code perfectly. After the Mother's Club donation was exhausted, Gates and other students sought time on systems including DEC PDP minicomputers. One of these systems was a PDP-10 belonging to Computer Center Corporation which banned Gates, Paul Allen, Rick Wyland, and Gates' best friend and first business partner Kent Evans, for the summer after it caught them exploiting bugs in the operating system to obtain free computer time. The four students formed the Lakeside Programmers Club to make money. At the end of the ban, they offered to find bugs in CCC's software in exchange for extra computer time. Rather than using the system remotely via teletype, Gates went to CCC's offices and studied source code for various programs that ran on the system, including Fortran, Lisp, and machine language. The arrangement with CCC continued until 1970 when the company went out of business. The following year, a lakeside teacher enlisted Gates and Evans to automate the school's class scheduling system, providing them computer time and royalties in return. The duo worked diligently in order to have the program ready for their senior year. Towards the end of their junior year, Evans was killed in a mountain climbing accident, which Gates has described as one of the saddest days of his life. Gates then turned to Alan who helped him finish the system for Lakeside. At 17, Gates formed a venture with Alan called, Trafo Data to make traffic counters based on the Intel 8008 processor. In 1972, he served as a congressional page in the House of Representatives. He was a National Merit Scholar when he graduated from Lakeside School in 1973. He scored 1,590 out of 1,600 on the Scholastic Aptitude Tests and enrolled at Harvard College in the autumn of 1973. He chose a pre-law major but took mathematics and graduate-level computer science courses. While at Harvard, he met fellow student Steve Ballmer. Gates left Harvard after two years while Ballmer stayed and graduated magna cum laude. Years later, Ballmer succeeded Gates as Microsoft's CEO and maintained that position from 2000 until his resignation in 2014. Gates devised an algorithm for pancake sorting as a solution to one of a series of unsolved problems presented in a combinatorics class by Professor Harry Lewis. His solution held the record as the fastest version for over 30 years, and its successor is faster by only 2%. His solution was formalized and published in collaboration with Harvard computer scientist Christos Papadimitriou. Gates remained in contact with Paul Allen and joined him at Honeywell during the summer of 1974. In 1975, the MITS Altair 8800 was released based on the Intel 8080 CPU and Gates and Allen saw the opportunity to start their own computer software company. Gates dropped out of Harvard that same year. His parents were supportive of him after seeing how much he wanted to start his own company. He explained his decision to leave Harvard, if things hadn't worked out, I could always go back to school. I was officially on leave. Chapter 2, Microsoft Chapter 3 Section 1 basic. Gates read the January 1975 issue of Popular Electronics which demonstrated the Altair 8800, and he contacted Microinstrumentation and Telemetry Systems to inform them that he and others were working on a basic interpreter for the platform. In reality, Gates and Allen did not have an Altair and had not written code for it, they merely wanted to gauge Mitz's interest. MITS President Ed Roberts agreed to meet them for a demonstration, and over the course of a few weeks they developed an Altair emulator that ran on a mini-computer, and then the basic interpreter. The demonstration was held at MITS's offices in Albuquerque, New Mexico, 
it was a success and resulted in a deal with Mitz to distribute the interpreter as Altair Basic. Mitz hired Allen, and Gates took a leave of absence from Harvard to work with him at Mitz in November 1975. Allen named their partnership Microsoft, a combination of microcomputer and software, and their first office was in Albuquerque. The first employee Gates and Allen hired was their high school collaborator Rick Wyland. They dropped the hyphen within a year and officially registered the trade name Microsoft with the Secretary of the State of New Mexico on November 26, 1976. Gates never returned to Harvard to complete his studies. Microsoft's Altair Basic was popular with computer hobbyists, but Gates discovered that a pre-market copy had leaked out and was being widely copied and distributed. In February 1976, he wrote an open letter to hobbyists in the MITS newsletter in which he asserted that more than 90% of the users of Microsoft Altair Basic had not paid Microsoft for it and the Altair hobby market was in danger of eliminating the incentive for any professional developers to produce, distribute, and maintain high-quality software. This letter was unpopular with many computer hobbyists, but Gates persisted in his belief that software developers should be able to demand payment. Microsoft became independent of MITS in late 1976, and it continued to develop programming language software for various systems. The company moved from Albuquerque to Bellevue, Washington on January 1, 1979. Gates said he personally reviewed and often rewrote every line of code that the company produced in its first five years. As the company grew, he transitioned into a manager role, then an executive. Donkey. Bass is a computer game written in 1981 and included with early versions of the PC DOS operating system distributed with the original IBM PC. It is a driving game in which the player must avoid hitting donkeys. The game was written by Gates and Neil Conzen. Chapter 3 Section 2 – IBM Partnership IBM, the leading supplier of computer equipment to commercial enterprises at the time, approached Microsoft in July 1980 concerning software for its upcoming personal computer, the IBM PC, after Bill Gates' mother, Mary Maxwell Gates, mentioned Microsoft to John Opel, IBM's CEO. IBM first proposed that Microsoft write the basic interpreter. IBM's representatives also mentioned that they needed an operating system, and Gates referred them to Digital Research, makers of the widely used CP-M operating system. IBM's discussions with Digital Research went poorly, however, and they did not reach a licensing agreement. IBM representative Jack Sams mentioned the licensing difficulties during a subsequent meeting with Gates and asked if Microsoft could provide an operating system. A few weeks later, Gates and Allen proposed using 86DOS, an operating system similar to CP-M, that Tim Patterson of Seattle Computer Products had made for hardware similar to the PC. Microsoft made a deal with SCP to be the exclusive licensing agent of 86DOS, and later the full owner. Microsoft employed Patterson to adapt the operating system for the PC and delivered it to IBM as PC-DOS for a one-time fee of $50,000. The contract itself only earned Microsoft a relatively small fee. It was the prestige brought to Microsoft by IBM's adoption of their operating system that would be the origin of Microsoft's transformation from a small business to the leading software company in the world. Gates had not offered to transfer the copyright on the operating system to IBM, because he believed that other personal computer makers would clone IBM's PC hardware. They did, making the IBM-compatible PC, running DOS, a de facto standard. The sales of MS-DOS made Microsoft a major player in the industry. The press quickly identified Microsoft as being very influential on the IBM PC. PC Magazine asked if Gates was the man behind the machine. Gates oversaw Microsoft's company restructuring on June 25, 1981, which reincorporated the company in Washington state and made Gates the president and chairman of the board, with Paul Allen as vice president and vice chairman. In early 1983, Allen left the company after receiving a Hodgkin lymphoma diagnosis, effectively ending the formal business partnership between Gates and Allen 
which had been strained months prior due to a contentious dispute over Microsoft equity. Later in the decade, Gates repaired his relationship with Allen, and together the two donated millions to their childhood school Lakeside. They remained friends until Allen's death in October 2018. Chapter 3 Section 3 Windows Microsoft and Gates launched their first retail version of Microsoft Windows on November 20, 1985 in an attempt to fend off competition from Apple's Macintosh GUI, which had bewitched consumers with its simplicity and ease of use. In August of the following year, the company struck a deal with IBM to develop a separate operating system called OS-2. Although the two companies successfully developed the first version of the new system, the partnership deteriorated due to mounting creative differences. The operating system grew out of DOS in an organic fashion over a decade, until with Windows 95 the DOS text screen was relegated to the closet. Windows XP, released one year after Gates stepped down as Microsoft CEO, reportedly was the first to not be based on DOS. Windows 8.1 was the last version of the OS released before Gates left the chair of the firm to John W. Thompson on February 5, 2014. As of 2020, the latest release is known as Windows 10. Chapter 3 Section 4 Management Style Gates had primary responsibility for Microsoft's product strategy from the company's founding from 1975 until 2006. He gained a reputation for being distant from others, an industry executive complained in 1981 that Gates is notorious for not being reachable by phone and for not returning phone calls. An Atari executive recalled that he showed Gates a game and defeated him 35 of 37 times. When they met again a month later, Gates won or tied every game. He had studied the game until he solved it. That is a competitor. In the early 1980s, while business partner Paul Allen was undergoing treatments for cancer, Gates, according to Allen, conspired to reduce Allen's share in Microsoft by issuing himself stock options. In his autobiography, Allen would later recall that Gates was scheming to rip me off. It was mercenary opportunism plain and simple. Gates says he remembers the episode differently. Allen would also recall that Gates was prone to shouting episodes. Gates met regularly with Microsoft's senior managers and program managers, and the managers described him as being verbally combative. He also berated them for perceived holes in their business strategies or proposals that placed the company's long-term interests at risk. He interrupted presentations with such comments as that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard and why don't you just give up your options and join the Peace Corps. The target of his outburst would then have to defend the proposal in detail until Gates was fully convinced. When subordinates appeared to be procrastinating, he was known to remark sarcastically, I'll do it over the weekend. During Microsoft's early years, Gates was an active software developer, particularly in the company's programming language products, but his primary role in most of the company's history was as a manager and executive. He has not officially been on a development team since working on the TRS-80 Model 100, but he wrote code that shipped with the company's products as late as 1989. Jerry Pornell wrote in 1985 when Gates announced Microsoft Excel, Bill Gates likes the program, not because it's going to make him a lot of money, but because it's a neat hack. On June 15, 2006, Gates announced that he would transition out of his role at Microsoft to dedicate more time to philanthropy. He gradually divided his responsibilities between two successors when he placed Ray Ozzie in charge of management and Craig Mundy in charge of long-term product strategy. The process took two years to fully transfer his duties to Ozzie and Mundy, and was completed on June 27, 2008. Chapter 3 Section 5 Antitrust Litigation Gates approved of many decisions that led to antitrust litigation over Microsoft's business practices. In the 1998 United States v. Microsoft case, Gates gave deposition testimony that several journalists characterized as evasive. He argued with examiner David Boys over the contextual meaning of words such as compete, concerned, 
and we. Later in the year, when portions of the videotaped deposition were played back in court, the judge was seen laughing and shaking his head. Business Week reported. Early rounds of his deposition show him offering obfuscatory answers and saying I don't recall so many times that even the presiding judge had to chuckle. Worse, many of the technology chief's denials and pleas of ignorance were directly refuted by prosecutors with snippets of email that Gates both sent and received. Gates later said that he had simply resisted attempts by boys to mischaracterize his words and actions. Did I fence with boys? I plead guilty. Rudeness to boys in the first degree. Despite Gates's denials, the judge ruled that Microsoft had committed monopolization, tying and blocking competition, each in violation of the Sherman Antitrust Act. Chapter 3, Post-Microsoft Since leaving day-to-day -day operations at Microsoft, Gates has continued his philanthropy and works on other projects. According to the Bloomberg Billionaires Index, Gates was the world's highest earning billionaire in 2013, as his net worth increased by 15.8 billion US dollars to 78.5 billion US dollars. As of January 2014, most of Gates's assets are held in Cascade Investment LLC, an entity through which he owns stakes in numerous businesses, including Four Seasons Hotels and Resorts, and Corvus Corporation on February 4, 2014. Gates stepped down as chairman of Microsoft to become technology advisor at the firm, alongside CEO Satya Nadella. Gates provided his perspective on a range of issues in a substantial interview that was published in the March 27, 2014 issue of Rolling Stone magazine. In the interview, Gates provided his perspective on climate change, his charitable activities, various tech companies and people involved in them, and the state of America. In response to a question about his greatest fear when he looks 50 years into the future, Gates stated, there'll be some really bad things that'll happen in the next 50 or 100 years, but hopefully none of them on the scale of, say, a million people that you didn't expect to die from a pandemic, or nuclear or bioterrorism. Gates also identified innovation as the real driver of progress and pronounced that America's way better today than it's ever been. Gates has expressed concern about the potential harms of superintelligence, in a Reddit Ask Me Anything, he stated that. First the machines will do a lot of jobs for us and not be super intelligent. That should be positive if we manage it well. A few decades after that though the intelligence is strong enough to be a concern. I agree with Elon Musk and some others on this and don't understand why some people are not concerned. In an interview that was held at the TED conference in March 2015, with Baidu's CEO, Robin Lee, Gates said he would highly recommend Nick Bostrom's recent work, Superintelligence, Paths, Dangers, Strategies. During the conference, Gates warned that the world was not prepared for the next pandemic, a situation that would come to pass in late 2019 when the COVID-19 pandemic began. In March 2018, Gates met at his home in Seattle with Mohammed bin Salman, the reformist crown prince and de facto ruler of Saudi Arabia to discuss investment opportunities for Saudi Vision 2030. In June 2019, Gates admitted that losing the mobile operating system race to Android was his biggest mistake. He stated that it was within their skill set of being the dominant player, but partially blames the antitrust litigation during the time. That same year, Gates became an advisory board member of the Bloomberg New Economy Forum. On March 13, 2020, Microsoft announced Gates would be leaving his board positions at Berkshire Hathaway and Microsoft to dedicate his efforts in philanthropic endeavors such as climate change, global health and development, and education. During the COVID 19 pandemic, Gates has widely been looked at by media outlets as an expert on the issue despite him not being a public official or having any prior medical training. His foundation did, however, establish the COVID-19 Therapeutics Accelerator in 2020 to hasten the development and evaluation of new and repurposed drugs and biologics to treat patients for COVID-19, and, as of February 2021, Gates expressed that he and Anthony Fauci frequently talk and collaborate on matters including vaccines and other medical innovations to fight the pandemic. Chapter 4 Section 1, 
business ventures and investments. Gates has a multi-billion dollar investment portfolio with stake in various sectors and has participated in several entrepreneurial ventures beyond Microsoft, including Auto, Nation, automotive retailer that Gates has a 16% stake in trading on the NYSE. BGC3 LLC, a think tank and research company founded by Gates. Canadian National Railway, a Canadian Class I freight railway. As of 2019, Gates is the largest single shareholder of CN stock. Cascade Investment LLC, a private investment and holding company incorporated in the United States, founded and controlled by Gates and headquartered in Kirkland, Washington. Gates is the top private owner of farmland in the United States with land holdings owned via Cascade Investment totaling 242,000 acres across 19 states. He is the 49th largest private owner of land in the U.S. Carbon Engineering, a for-profit venture founded by David Keith, which Gates helped fund. Its is also supported by Chevron Corporation and Occidental Petroleum. Scopex, Keith's academic venture in sun dimming geoengineering, which Gates provided most of the $12 million for. Corbus, a digital image licensing and rights services company founded and shared by Gates. Earth Now, Seattle based startup company aiming to blanket the Earth with live satellite video coverage. Gates is a large financial backer. Eclipse Aviation, a defunct manufacturer of very light jets. Gates was a major stakeholder early on in the project. Impossible Foods, a company that develops plant-based substitutes for meat products. Some of the $396 million Patrick O. Brown collected for his business came from Gates around 2014 to 2017. Ecolab, global provider of water, hygiene and energy technologies and services to the food, energy, healthcare, industrial and hospitality markets. Gates increased his stake of 10.8% in Ecolab to 25% in 2012. ResearchGate, a social networking site for scientists. Gates participated in a $35 million round of financing along with other investors. TerraPower, a nuclear reactor design company co-founded and chaired by Gates, which is developing next-generation traveling wave reactor nuclear power plants in an effort to tackle climate change. Breakthrough Energy Ventures, a closed fund for wealthy individuals who seek ROI on a 20-year horizon, which is funding green startups and a host of other low-carbon entrepreneurial projects, including everything from advanced nuclear technology to synthetic breast milk. It was founded by Gates in 2015. Ginkgo Bioworks, a biotech startup that received $350 million in venture funding in 2019, in part from Gates's investment firm Cascade Investment. Chapter 4, Climate Change and Energy Gates considers climate change and global access to energy to be critical, interrelated issues. He has urged governments and the private sector to invest in research and development to make clean, reliable energy cheaper. Gates envisions that a breakthrough innovation in sustainable energy technology could drive down both greenhouse gas emissions and poverty, and bring economic benefits by stabilizing energy prices. In 2011, he said. In 2015, he wrote about the challenge of transitioning the world's energy system, from one based primarily on fossil fuels to one based on sustainable energy sources. Global energy transitions have historically taken decades. He wrote, I believe we can make this transition faster, both because the pace of innovation is accelerating, and because we have never had such an urgent reason to move from one source of energy to another. This rapid transition, according to Gates, would depend on increased government funding for basic research and financially risky private sector investment, to enable innovation in diverse areas such as nuclear energy, grid energy storage to facilitate greater use of solar and wind energy, and solar fuels. Gates spearheaded two initiatives that he announced at the 2015 United Nations Climate Change Conference in Paris. One was Mission Innovation, 
in which 20 national governments pledged to double their spending on research and development for carbon-free energy in over five years' time. Another initiative was Breakthrough Energy, a group of investors who agreed to fund high-risk startups in clean energy technologies. Gates, who had already invested $1 billion of his own money in innovative energy startups, committed a further $1 billion to Breakthrough Energy. In December 2020, he called for the U.S. federal government to create institutes for clean energy research, analogous to the National Institutes of Health. Gates has also urged rich nations to shift to 100% synthetic beef industries to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from food production. Gates has been criticized for holding a large stake in Signature Aviation, a company that services emissions intensive private jets. In 2019, he began to divest from fossil fuels. He does not expect divestment itself to have much practical impact, but says that if his efforts to provide alternatives were to fail, he would not want to personally benefit from an increase in fossil fuel stock prices. After publishing his book How to Avoid a Climate Disaster, parts of the climate activist community criticized Gates' approach as technological solutionism. Chapter 5, Political Positions Chapter 6, Section 1, Regulation of the Software Industry In 1998, Gates rejected the need for regulation of the software industry in testimony before the United States Senate. Chapter 6, Section 2, Donald Trump Facebook Ban On February 18, 2021, after Facebook and Twitter had banned Donald Trump from their platforms as a result of the 2020 United States presidential election which led to the 2021 storming of the United States Capitol, Gates said a permanent ban of Trump would be a shame and would amount to an extreme measure. He warned that such a move would cause polarization if users with different political views divide up among various social networks. I don't think banning somebody who actually did get a fair number of votes, well less than a majority, but I don't think having him off forever would be that good. Chapter 6 Section 3, Patents for COVID-19 Vaccines In April 2021, during the COVID-19 pandemic, Gates was criticized for suggesting that pharmaceutical companies should hold on to patents for COVID-19 vaccines. The criticism came due to the possibility of this preventing poorer nations from obtaining adequate vaccines. Tara Van Ho of the University of Essex stated, Gates speaks as if all the lives being lost in India are inevitable but eventually the West will help when in reality the US and UK are holding their feet on the neck of developing states by refusing to break protections. It's disgusting. Chapter 6, Philanthropy Chapter 7 Section 1, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation Gates studied the work of Andrew Carnegie and John D. Rockefeller, and donated some of his Microsoft stock in 1994 to create the William H. Gates Foundation. In 2000, Gates and his wife combined three family foundations and Gates donated stock valued at $5 billion to create the charitable Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which was identified by the Funds for NGOs Company in 2013 as the world's wealthiest charitable foundation, with assets reportedly valued at more than $34.6 billion. The foundation allows benefactors to access information that shows how its money is being spent, unlike other major charitable organizations such as the Wellcome Trust. Gates, through his foundation, also donated $20 million to Carnegie Mellon University for a new building to be named Gates Center for Computer Science which opened in 2009. Gates has credited the generosity and extensive philanthropy of David Rockefeller as a major influence. Gates and his father met with Rockefeller several times, and their charity work is partly modeled on the Rockefeller family's philanthropic focus, whereby they are interested in tackling the global problems that are ignored by governments and other organizations. As of 2007, Bill and Melinda Gates were the second most generous philanthropists in America, having given over $28 billion to charity, the couple plan to eventually donate 95% of their wealth to charity. The foundation is organized into five program areas, Global Development Division, Global Health Division, United States Division, and Global Policy and Advocacy Division. 
Among others, it supports a wide range of public health projects, granting aid to fight transmissible diseases such as AIDS, tuberculosis and malaria, as well as widespread vaccine programs to eradicate polio. It grants funds to learning institutes and libraries and supports scholarships at universities. The foundation established a water, sanitation and hygiene program to provide sustainable sanitation services in poor countries. Its agriculture division supports the International Rice Research Institute in developing golden rice, a genetically modified rice variant used to combat vitamin A deficiency. The goal of the foundation is to provide 120 million women and girls, in the poorest countries, with high-quality contraceptive information and services, with the longer-term goal of universal access to voluntary family planning. In 2007, the Los Angeles Times criticized the foundation for investing its assets in companies that have been accused of worsening poverty, pollution and pharmaceutical firms that do not sell to developing countries. Although the foundation announced a review of its investments to assess social responsibility, it was subsequently cancelled and upheld its policy of investing for maximum return, while using voting rights to influence company practices. Gates delivered his thoughts in a fireside chat moderated by journalist and news anchor Shireen Barn virtually at the Singapore FinTech Festival on December 8, 2020 on the topic, Building Infrastructure for Resilience, what the COVID-19 response can teach us about how to scale financial inclusion? Governments are there to think ahead to bad things that might happen. In the case of pandemic, not enough was done. We can't forget that another pandemic will come and we'll need to invest in being ready in that, while not forgetting that we were not prepared and we're going to have to invest, just like having a fire department, some money in an intelligent way and actually simulate what might happen and make sure that we're ready for it. Gates favors the normalization of COVID-19 masks. In a November 2020 interview, he said, what are these, like, nudists? I mean, you know, we ask you to wear pants, and no American says, or very few Americans say, that that's, like, some terrible thing. Chapter 7 Section 2 – Personal Donations Melinda Gates suggested that people should emulate the philanthropic efforts of the Salwan family, who sold their home and gave away half of its value, as detailed in their book, The Power of Half. Gates and his wife invited Joan Salwan to Seattle to speak about what the family had done, and on December 9, 2010, Bill and Melinda Gates and investor Warren Buffett each signed a commitment they called the Giving Pledge, which is a commitment by all three to donate at least half of their wealth, over the course of time, to charity. Gates has also provided personal donations to educational institutions. In 1999, Gates donated $20 million to the Massachusetts Institute of Technology for the construction of a computer laboratory named the William H. Gates Building that was designed by architect Frank Gehry. While Microsoft had previously given financial support to the institution, this was the first personal donation received from Gates. The Maxwell Dworkin Laboratory of the Harvard John A. Paulson School of Engineering and Applied Sciences is named after the mothers of both Gates and Microsoft President Stephen A. Ballmer, both of whom were students, and donated funds for the laboratory's construction. Gates also donated $6 million to the construction of the Gates Computer Science Building, completed in January 1996, on the campus of Stanford University. The building contains the Computer Science Department, and the Computer Systems Laboratory of Stanford's Engineering Department. Since 2005, Gates and his foundation have taken an interest in solving global sanitation problems. For example, they announced the Reinvent the Toilet Challenge, which has received considerable media interest. To raise awareness for the topic of sanitation and possible solutions, Gates drank water that was produced from human feces in 2014, it was produced from a sewage sludge treatment process called the Omni Processor. In early 2015, he also appeared with Jimmy Fallon on The Tonight Show and challenged him to see if he could taste the difference between this reclaimed water or bottled water. In November 2017, Gates said he would give $50 million to the Dementia Discovery Fund, a venture capital fund that seeks treatment for Alzheimer's disease. 
He also pledged an additional $50 million to startup ventures working in Alzheimer's research. Bill and Melinda Gates have said that they intend to leave their three children $10 million each as their inheritance. With only $30 million kept in the family, they are expected to give away about 99.96% of their wealth. On August 25, 2018, Gates distributed $600,000 through his foundation via UNICEF which is helping flood-affected victims in Kerala, India. Chapter 7 Section 3 – Charity Sports Events On April 29, 2017, Gates partnered with Swiss tennis legend Roger Federer in playing in the match for Africa 4, a non-competitive tennis match at a sold-out key arena in Seattle. The event was in support of the Roger Federer Foundation's charity efforts in Africa. Federer and Gates played against John Isner, the top-ranked American player for much of this decade, and Mike McCready, the lead guitarist for Pearl Jam. The pair won the match six games to four. Overall, they raised $2 million for children in Africa. The following year, Gates and Federer returned to play in the match for Africa 5 on March 5, 2018, at San Jose's SAP Center. Their opponents were Jack Sock, one of the top American players and a Grand Slam winner in doubles, and Savannah Guthrie, a co-anchor for NBC's Today Show. Gates and Federer recorded their second match victory together by a score of 6-3 and the event raised over $2.5 million. Chapter 7 Works. Gates has written three books. The Road Ahead, written with Microsoft executive Nathan Mervald, and journalist Peter Reinierson, was published in November 1995. It summarized the implications of the personal computing revolution, and described a future profoundly changed by the arrival of a global information superhighway. Business at the Speed of Thought was published in 1999, and discusses how business and technology are integrated, and shows how digital infrastructures and information networks can help to get an edge on the competition. How to Avoid a Climate Disaster presents what Gates learned in over a decade of studying climate change and investing in innovations to address climate problems. Chapter 8 Personal Life Gates married Melinda French on the Hawaiian island of Lanai on January 1, 1994. At the time, Gates was given permission by Melinda to spend limited time with his ex-girlfriend, businesswoman and weanblood. Bill and Melinda have three children, Jennifer, Rory, and Phoebe. The family's residence is an earth-sheltered mansion in the side of a hill overlooking Lake Washington in Medina, Washington. In 2009, property taxes on the mansion were reported to be 1.063 million US dollars, on a total assessed value of 147.5 million US dollars. The 66,000 square foot estate has a 60 foot swimming pool with an underwater music system, as well as a 2,500 square foot gym and a 1,000 square foot dining room. On May 3, 2021, Bill and Melinda Gates announced that they had decided to divorce following 27 years of marriage, and 34 years as a couple. The couple said they will keep working together on charitable efforts. The Wall Street Journal reported that Melinda had been meeting with divorce attorneys since 2019, citing interviews that suggested Bill's ties with convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein was at least one of her concerns. A New York Times article also reported several cases of misconduct at Microsoft and at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, where Bill Gates pursued women who worked for him and had an affair with an employee at Microsoft in 2000. Six current and former employees of Microsoft reported that Gates created at times an uncomfortable workplace environment for women. In an interview with Rolling Stone, Gates stated in regard to his faith, the moral systems of religion, I think, are super important. We've raised our kids in a religious way, they've gone to the Catholic Church that Melinda goes to and I participate in. I've been very lucky, and therefore I owe it to try and reduce the inequity in the world. And that's kind of a religious belief. I mean, it's at least a moral belief. In the same 2014 interview Gates also said, 
I agree with people like Richard Dawkins that mankind felt the need for creation myths. Before we really began to understand disease and the weather and things like that, we sought false explanations for them. Now science has filled in some of the realm, not all, that religion used to fill. But the mystery and the beauty of the world is overwhelmingly amazing, and there's no scientific explanation of how it came about. To say that it was generated by random numbers, that does seem, you know, sort of an uncharitable view. I think it makes sense to believe in God, but exactly what decision in your life you make differently because of it, I don't know. Gates purchased the Codex Lester, a collection of scientific writings by Leonardo da Vinci, for 30.8 million US dollars at an auction in 1994. In 1998, Gates reportedly paid $30 million for the original 1885 maritime painting lost on the Grand Banks, at the time a record price for an American painting. Gates is an avid reader, and the ceiling of his large home library, is engraved with a quotation from the great Gatsby. He also enjoys playing bridge, tennis, and golf. Gates's days are planned for him on a minute-by-minute -minute basis, similar to the US president's schedule. Despite his wealth and extensive business travel, Gates flew coach in commercial aircraft until 1997, when he bought a private jet dot in 2016, he revealed that he is colorblind. Chapter 9 Section 1, Wealth Tallies In 1999, his wealth briefly surpassed 101 billion US dollars. Since 2000, the nominal value of his Microsoft holdings has declined due to a fall in Microsoft's stock price after the dot-com bubble burst and the multi-billion dollar donations he has made to his charitable foundations. In May 2006, Gates remarked that he wished that he were not the richest man in the world because he disliked the attention it brought. In March 2010, Gates was the second wealthiest person after Carlos Slim, but regained the top position in 2013 according to the Bloomberg Billionaires list. Slim retook the position again in June 2014. Between 2009 and 2014, his wealth doubled from 40 billion US dollars to more than 82 billion US dollars. In October 2017, Gates was surpassed by Amazon founder Jeff Bezos as the richest person in the world. On November 15, 2019, he once again became the richest person in the world after a 48% increase in Microsoft shares, surpassing Bezos. Gates told the BBC, I've paid more tax than any individual ever, and gladly so, I've paid over $6 billion in taxes. He is a proponent of higher taxes, particularly for the rich. Gates has held the top spot on the list of the world's billionaires for 18 out of the past 23 years. Gates has several investments outside Microsoft, which in 2006 paid him a salary of $616,667 US dollars and $350,000 US dollar bonus totaling $966,667 US dollars. In 1989, he founded Corbus, a digital imaging company. In 2004, he became a director of Berkshire Hathaway, the investment company headed by longtime friend Warren Buffett. In 1987, Gates was listed as a billionaire in Forbes magazine's 400 Richest People in America issue, worth $1.25 billion at the time, and was the world's youngest self made billionaire. Since 1987, Gates has been included in the Forbes The World's Billionaires list and was the wealthiest person from 1995 to 1996, 1998 to 2007. 2009, and held the spot until 2018 before being overtaken by Jeff Bezos. Gates was number one on the Forbes 400 list from 1993 through to 2007, 2009, and 2014 through 2017. Chapter 9, Recognition Time magazine named Gates one of the 100 people who most influenced the 20th century, as well as one of the 100 most influential people of 2004, 2005, and 2006. Time also collectively named Gates, 
his wife Melinda and U2's lead singer Bono as the 2005 Persons of the Year for their humanitarian efforts. In 2006, he was voted eighth in the list of heroes of our time. Gates was listed in the London Sunday Times Power List in 1999, named CEO of the Year by Chief Executive Officers Magazine in 1994, ranked number one in the top 50 cyber elite by time in 1998, ranked number two in the Upside Elite 100 in 1999, and was included in The Guardian as one of the top 100 influential people in media in 2001. Gates was elected member of the U.S. National Academy of Engineering in 1996 for contributions to the founding and development of personal computing. He was named honorary member of the American Library Association in 1998. He was elected a foreign member of the Chinese Academy of Engineering in 2017. According to Forbes, Gates was ranked as the fourth most powerful person in the world in 2012, up from fifth in 2011. In 1994, he was honored as the 20th Distinguished Fellow of the British Computer Society. In 1999, Gates received New York Institute of Technology's President's Medal. Gates has received honorary doctorates from Non Road Business University at KTH Royal Institute of Technology, Waseda University, Tsinghua University, Harvard University, the Karolinska Institute, and Cambridge University. He was also made an honorary trustee of Peking University in 2007. Gates was made an honorary Knight Commander of the Order of the British Empire by Queen Elizabeth II in 2005. In January 2006, he was awarded the Grand Cross of the Order of Prince Henry by the President of Portugal Jorge Sampaio. In November 2006, he was awarded the placard of the Order of the Aztec Eagle, together with his wife Melinda who was awarded the insignia of the same order, both for their philanthropic work around the world in the areas of health and education, particularly in Mexico, and specifically in the program Unpaced Electores. Gates received the 2010 Bar Award for Business Leadership from the Franklin Institute for his achievements at Microsoft and his philanthropic work. Also in 2010, he was honored with the Silver Buffalo Award by the Boy Scouts of America, its highest award for adults, for his service to youth. In 2002, Bill and Melinda Gates received the Jefferson Award for Greatest Public Service Benefiting the Disadvantaged. He was given the 2006 James C. Morgan Global Humanitarian Award from the Tech Awards. In 2015, Gates and his wife Melinda received the Padma Bhushan, India's third highest civilian award for their social work in the country. Barack Obama honored Bill and Melinda Gates with the Presidential Medal of Freedom for their philanthropic efforts in 2016, and Francois Hollande awarded Bill and Melinda in the following year with France's highest national order, as commander of the Legion of Honor for their charity efforts. Entomologists named Bill Gates Flowerfly, Aristalis Gatesy, in his honor in 1997. Chapter 10, Depiction in Media Chapter 11 Section 1, Documentary Films About Gates The Machine That Changed the World Triumph of the Nerds Nerds 2.0.1 Waiting for Superman The Virtual Revolution Inside Bill's Brain, Decoding Bill Gates Chapter 11 Section 2, Feature Films 1999, Pirates of Silicon Valley, a film that chronicles the rise of Apple and Microsoft from the early 1970s to 1997s. Gates is portrayed by Anthony Michael Hall. 2002, Nothing So Strange, a mockumentary featuring Gates as the subject of a modern assassination. Gates briefly appears at the start, played by Steve Sires. 2010, The Social Network, a film that chronicles the development of Facebook. Gates is portrayed by Steve Sires. 2015, Steve Jobs vs. Bill Gates, The Competition to Control the Personal Computer, 1974-1999, original film from the National Geographic Channel for the American Genius series. 
Chapter 11 Section 3, Video and Film Clips 1983, Steve Jobs hosts Bill Gates in the Macintosh dating game at the Macintosh pre-launch event. 2007, Steve Jobs and Bill Gates together at the D5 conference, All Things Digital. 2009 minus, Bill Gates has given numerous TED talks on current concerns such as innovation, education and fighting global diseases. Chapter 11 Section 4, Radio Gates was the guest on BBC Radio 4's Desert Island Discs on January 31, 2016, in which he talked about his relationships with his father and Steve Jobs, meeting Melinda and French, the start of Microsoft and some of his habits. His choice of things to take on a desert island were, for music, Blue Skies by Willie Nelson, a book, The Better Angels of Our Nature by Steven Pinker, and Luxury Item, a DVD collection of lectures from the teaching company. Chapter 11 Section 5, Television Gates made a guest appearance as himself on the TV show The Big Bang Theory. The episode on which he appeared was appropriately entitled The Gates Excitation. He also appeared in a cameo role in 2019 on the series finale of Silicon Valley. Chapter 11 Section 6, Primary Sources Gates, Bill. An exclusive interview with Bill Gates. Financial Times 1. Online. Gates, Bill. Remarks of Bill Gates, Harvard Commencement 2007. Harvard Gazette 7. Online. Kinsley, Michael, and Connor Clark, eds. Creative Capitalism, A Conversation with Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, and Other Economic Leaders.